Hello everyone, Will Terrell here. Today I wanted to do a, uh, a video talking about artist excuses. Um, and it's excuses that I've had in my own life and that I'm sure everybody else has had in their own experiences. And uh, so I just wanted to talk a few about, a few, about a few of the ones that I've had to confront in my own life and how I was able to confront them and even talk about some of the ones that I'm still dealing with in my own life. Um, it's, it's, you know, with, it's a never-ending process on becoming the person that you want to be. You just have to always keep pushing yourself to uh, become a better person and to be the person that you're, you always aspire to and to uh, learn the lessons from the mistakes that you make um, whenever possible. So. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was um, the types of excuses that we use. Uh, there's the uh, physical excuses like I don't have time or um, I'm not as good as other people or um, I don't have the same opportunities that somebody else has um, or I don't have the money to buy tools or or to go to the right classes or um, I mean there's there's so many excuses that we have for why we're not doing what it is that we want to do with our lives and um, God knows I've had a lot of those and I still I still find I'm creeping into my life from time to time um, let me think of one recently well one of the ones I really struggled with the last few years is is feeling alone and isolated as a, a, a creative person, um, wanting people to draw with and wanting people to be challenged by as a as an artist. Um, it it's such a, a lonely job being, especially comic books, because um, it, it takes so much to learn how to do the thing that you want to do that um, not a lot of people can relate to it, like. I I, um, I was at a convention in Amarillo recently, uh, last weekend, I think, and um, I was talking to a, a young artist that it was his first convention and he had his first comic book, and uh, I was asking him uh, how hard it was to do that first comic book because, <laughs> in my experience, when it went back in my very my amateur days, uh, one thing I learned was. There's two types of comic book creators. There's ones that talk about making comics, and then there's ones that have made a comic. And there is, you know, thousands of, of miles separating the two because they just do not compare. Because <laughs> um, in your in your mind, you've got all these ideas, like, you know, it looks easy, and it should be easy, and blah, 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 blah. And so when you sit down to do it, and it doesn't work, uh, it's very frustrating and so the type of person that will actually sit down and confront those monsters in front of you and and put in the work to actually uh, learn to actually do a finished product even if it's a bad finished product um, it just it sets you apart from everybody else because you had to learn those lessons and the more that you do that and put yourself out there the better that you'll get So when it comes to excuses, there are valid reasons why you're not able to do something, um, and I'm not denying that. Like one of the ones that I always ran into uh, when I'd work with talented artists that just didn't have the time, uh, a lot of times it was often because they had family, which is a very valid reason. You know, you you've got kids and a wife and. You only have so much time in the day, especially if you're working full time to support everybody, uh, and so that that's an excuse that's hard to argue against. But at the same time, I've run into so many passionate creators that have you know three kids and they have a wife and they have a full time job, and they still put in 20, 30 hours a week doing what it is that they loved because that. Um, while it is a very valid reason why it's hard to put in that time and why it's uh, hard to val you know, validate 
making uh, those sacrifices, if you really want something and you want to get somewhere, the only way to get there is by moving in that direction. Because it takes the same amount of time, you know, it's going to take you, uh, like to do a graphic novel, it's going to take you a whole year or more. Uh, or to, to get a job as an animator, it's going to take you, you know, dozens of storyboards that are not necessarily successful to learn the lessons that you need to get hired by a studio. You know, it uh, it's going to take you that much time anyways. And if you're just putting it off, you're going to have to learn those lessons when you finally get around to doing it. Um, so they're, they're valid excuses, but they are excuses. And... Um, and it's like that with everything, you know. If you don't have the money to uh, to go to school, or to, uh, or if you're putting off going, you know, learning what you need to, to or putting in the time to do what you want to do, that's fine. But um, forgive yourself of of not having that time because a lot. I, what I run into a lot is people that are just they beat themselves up because they're not able to do what it is that they want. And uh, they spend so much time thinking about it that they they never actually they're not even enjoying the things that they do have in life. Um, but this video, I want to talk about how do you overcome those excuses? Like how do you um, how do you become the person that you want to be? And to do that, Hey, you need to write down this goal. You need to write down this one thing. No excuses. No matter what. And um, I remember doing that when I was, I think I was 19. And uh, I made the mistake of thinking that applied to everybody. <laughs> but it doesn't. It only applies to you. And it only applies to you if you definitely make that, that commitment to yourself. That you are not going to live by excuses. Um, but yeah, write down on your wall or on your board or wherever you are, no excuses. And anytime you hear yourself saying something like, I don't have the time for this, or there's better artists out there. But if you do find yourself still procrastinating, um, which will happen, I guarantee it, um, make sure you just acknowledge it and let it go. Don't dwell on what you're not doing. Don't dwell on what's not working. Don't dwell on um, your fears, um, because in you know in life, what you focus on is going to expand. And if you're always focusing on what's not working, you're going to get the same results, and you're going to get more opportunities to be miserable. <laughs> but if you focus on what is working, you know the one thing that you did do right today. Um, then that thing is going to get better and better. Um, and I, I think that's the problem that we, we all run into is we we get bogged down and, and it's got to be right the first time. Um, it's, you know, if, I've got to be doing everything right today. Uh, it, if I don't, if I'm not that, if I'm not doing everything right today, then uh, it means that I don't have what it takes. And that's complete and total bull. Because we all, even even the most productive people have bad days. Um, it's just that the, the they're more productive because they know what to do with a bad day. They know how to handle it. They know how to you know just acknowledge it and move on instead of just beating themselves up over what what they didn't do that right that day. You have to um, you have to expect that things are going to go wrong, but you have to know what to do with it. And I, I think that I think a lot of people. Uh, run into that mistake where they um, they spend so much time thinking about the the things that the mistakes that they've made that they can't move on. But what I've learned in recent years is that uh, what I used to call mistakes are actually what give the drawing its character and. What, I, what used to frustrate me and make me quit on the drawing, um, I, I realized that that was the mistake. That was the only reason that it became a mistake is because I stopped working on it. 
where now I just keep pushing the drawing and pushing the drawing and letting those lines accidentally fall wherever they are uh, and then reworking them and reworking them until um, until they turn into something that I, that I really like. But um, before, I would just get frustrated and quit and move on to the next drawing or, or just stop drawing altogether. And, um, but now I, I've learned to just embrace and be patient with, a, with what it is I'm doing and build up tones over a long period, you know, however this has been. And this goes along with making mistakes as an artist or making excuses as an artist. Um, at some point, I realized that uh, there are no mistakes in drawing. And eventually, I was able to apply that to life, too. There are no mistakes in life. There are only things that didn't go according to plan. But as far as with art, um, you probably may not see it, but I make all kinds of mistakes on this drawing. Uh, and any time I do a drawing, I make all kinds of mistakes. What's really happening when we have excuses uh, is that we're what we're really saying is that I'm afraid. Um, now this is, I mean, like I said, there's valid excuses. You know, I I don't have the ability to draw. Like I I'm sick, or I you know uh, I just have. You know, I have to work 12 jobs or, or whatever. I mean, there, there are valid reasons. But for most of us, uh, there is no excuse. So when we say something, when we say an excuse, what we're really saying is, I'm afraid. And um, fear is perfectly normal. Fear is part of, of the creative process. Um, and it's something that if you're, you're not afraid, you should really be worried because it means that you're not really um, the decision that you're making there's no risk involved which is usually leads to a place that um, you'll end up being miserable at least it, that's what it was you know it's been in my experience if you're not afraid of a you know if it's the safe way to go you're always going to end up miserable down the road or I always ended up miserable you know, either it's taking a job because it pays better, even though it's not something you really want to do. Um, down the road, I just ended up miserable. Um, whether it's getting involved with somebody that, um, you know, like in a relationship that just because it's comfortable or available, but you know that that person's not good for you. You know, whether it's personal relationships or in business, uh, getting involved with them because it's the easier way to do it, um, that always ends up far worse. You know, it's a cancer on your life. So the easy way isn't always the best way. And if it is easy, then you, you need to be more worried about that than the, the thing that you're actually afraid of. So when you hear yourself say, I can't, or I won't, or I can't do it because of this. Um, ask yourself, what am I really afraid of? And focus on that. What can I do to confront that fear? Am I, af am I afraid to le leave um, comfort? Am I afraid to lose security? Is that the only reason? Um, and make yourself aware of it like it's okay to go down that road but at least be aware of it so I'm going back over it with a little bit of colored pencil to pop his nose out a little bit more I like using colored pencil over the prisma markers because it gives a, uh, a nice texture to the drawing
you'll notice I turn the page a lot when I'm sketching. Um, I find that every artist only has one good pen stroke. And to get to that stroke, you have to turn the page in order to draw it comfortably. That way you're not fighting against your own natural instincts. So, uh, for me, I found that the only, the only way to create proficiently is to create from a place of joy. Like, if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, um, I'm not going to keep doing it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. But it's so simple that I think sometimes we overlook it and we think that uh, creating has to be this, this grand thing. It has to be this big, uh, miraculous, uh, I created this great thing that uh, you know, everybody loves and that's, that's what's going to make me successful. But it doesn't work that way. <laughs> creating, uh, like when you do finally create something that people actually respond to, uh, it's usually a surprise because you were just creating anyways. <laughs> uh, but when you try and do it on purpose, it never works. <laughs> I just did this great thing. You know, everybody should love it. And then uh, no, nobody pays attention. Where when you're not paying attention, everybody loves it. <laughs> And the reason for that is because you have to create from a place of joy. You know, it, it's got to sneak up on you. Um, but getting to that place is, is, is a challenge uh, for a lot of people, especially if you, um, you're still struggling with how to even draw, you know, how to even um, pull off a sketch or um, how to even learn how to do certain things. You know, when you're when you're still in the learning phase, which you'll always be in the learning phase, um, it's easy to get caught up in in all the mistakes that you're making. Okay, so here's my favorite part of, of doing any of these sketches on the brown paper is uh, adding highlights to it. Uh, and I'm using the uh, white gel pen here. I'm trying to get started, um, but uh, normally. <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't recommend using uh, white when you're w with your highlights. Like uh, for painting, you you know either digitally or watercolor or acrylics, you want to mix uh, a lighter version of uh, the skin tone uh, so it's not so bright. Um, but white white gel pen is pretty handy. I can keep it in my case, um, and if I don't go too overboard with it, then it can be nice and subtle. Um, but if I do go overboard, which I tend to do, because it's fun making everything shiny, uh, you know, it can make people look like they're caught in sweat or whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is my favorite part. It's like you've, you've done this drawing, you've worked on it for uh, all this time, and then all of a sudden, with the height, it just, uh, with the highlights, it just pops. Uh, and I, I really enjoy this part of it all. Um, so I'm adding a little bit of highlight to his shirt and his belt. Uh, and just kind of trying to find the, uh, the the edges, the highlights of, of the highest point on his skin, and, and uh, where where just the edges of the um, of the form are catching the light from above. Uh, and yeah, I really like this part. I, I I'm sorry this video is so long. Uh, I've had to cut a lot of stuff out. I hope it still makes sense. Uh, and I feel like I'm rambling totally through this entire thing. Um, but I'm really glad that uh, if you've made it this far, <laughs> I hope you've gotten something out of it, either from just watching me draw or from some of the information I provided in the video. Uh, I know when I was first starting out, uh, and even, even now I'm still looking for um, people to share their experiences to, to you know, help me through obstacles that I'm going through now uh, and I and I always try and pass on what I've learned in my my career and um, with that with anything you know I'm not an expert I'm not um, the end-all be-all the answer for everything by any means at all 
uh, I'm, this is just the way I figured things out, and I'm still figuring things out. And um, God knows I'll, I'll keep figuring things out until the day I die, um, and I'll I'll keep sharing what I learned as I go. Um, I just I like to remind people that you know wherever you're at in your career uh, is not where you're going to be a year from now, or five years from now, or ten years from now, uh, and just try and keep that in mind when you're working, when you're sketching, or trying to get work or uh, build a portfolio or, or whatever it is your goal is, um, just allow yourself to make mistakes. You know, uh, Forgive yourself that you're not where you want to be yet um, and keep moving forward because uh, you're, every day that you do something, you're moving towards that goal and you're, be, you're becoming a little bit more that person that you want to be someday. Uh, and it's so much easier to work when you actually enjoy it when you actually enjoy being in your own mind and and doing your own drawings instead of beating yourself up I mean there's plenty of people out there to be critics and you don't need the one in your head the person in your head that you're that you have to listen to 24 hours a day to be the one that beats you up more than anybody else you know you have to do your best to to be your biggest fan and and just and have fun you know and uh, not think so much. So just keep in mind that you are now becoming the person that you want to be, the artist that you want to be, and and be patient with yourself and enjoy it, and uh, and share that with others. Love that chicken. <laughs>